My cousin saying that I'm not real family, and because of that, I had to reveal her secret. I'm not a person who likes to break promises. I try to avoid that as much as possible because when somebody puts their trust in me, it's not misplaced. The only thing that I require is loyalty, especially when it comes to family. But it appears that my cousin Diana has no concept of loyalty and she has brought back the sense of being unwanted that I've had growing up. I've always lived with my mother's side of the family because I do not know who my father is. The family's a bit big and very close-knit, and they're also very conservative, which is one of the reasons why I moved out of my grandfather's house the day I turned 18. The excuse was that I wanted to go off to college, but it mainly was just to join my cousin in another town. Diana was very free-spirited and different from the rest of the family, but they loved her. When I first started living there, I'll admit that the only things that I knew were what my family taught me. There were big churchgoers, did not approve of tattoos and piercings, etc. My family was also very respected in the community, and they were kind of rich as well. My grandfather made friends with the right people when he was still young and secured our future. Most of my relatives did not even have to go to college. They were given jobs as soon as they could work. They had the respect of everybody in the community just because they were part of the family. My grandparents were the glue that held the family together, but I knew that I was destined for a bit more. When I started hanging out with Diana, I became more open to people who did not share the same views as me. This helped me get rid of the small town mentality which I grew up with. Although I love my family, I was never really truly part of the family because my mom had me out of wedlock. Family members did not really say it out loud, but I saw it in the way that they treated me that I was not really part of the family as I wanted to be. Diana knew that, and she was the one family member who always made sure that I was included. She knew how I felt about being treated like an outcast by some of the snottier family members. As I said, my grandparents held the family together. Unfortunately, we lost my grandmother because of COVID. It was difficult and grandpa was never the same again. Most of family members already had their own lives and family, so they did not visit as much. But when I was in town, I stayed with him and took care of him. But after her death, uh, he was just not the same. About two years after her death, he became very sick and I stayed with him. Diana came when she could, but it was difficult for her because of work and because she also had a husband back at home. A husband that the whole family did not know about, but I'll get into that later. He passed away several weeks ago, and yes, it was sad, but we had seen it coming because of how sick he had been the past few days, and after he passed away, his estate was divided. He divided his estate amongst his whole family as well as his grandkids, and I did not even hear that my grandfather's will had been read. The way I found out was that my other male cousin Aiden posted a new gaming system that he bought and I commented on it, asking about the specifics and price. He then let me know the cost of it is an awful lot of money, but it's okay because he got quite a bit of money from old grandpa. Well, I asked him when he got the money because I did not get any. Aiden then told me that Diana's father, the oldest son and my mom's brother, was the one put in charge of the stuff. He called all the grandkids and gave them money. Then Aiden said that Diana was supposed to give me my money. Alarm bells went off because of the fact that this was the first time I was hearing about this. After speaking to Aiden, I visit Diana and luckily I found her at home with her husband. I told her what Aiden told me. And then I told her to give me my money. I did not demand the money. I asked her politely. I even tried to use a joking tone so that she would not be offended. But she looked at me and told me that she does not owe me a dollar. Wow. I asked what she meant. Because simply she has my money and her father gave her my share. That's when she said she did not feel that I deserved the money because I'm not even really family. By me not being family, she meant that I was my mother's daughter and she was not married. 
some. She felt that only the side of the family which is related to my grandfather's son deserves the money. She said that her father told her to do with the money as she wants because she took care of grandpa when he was sick. Before this, I've never experienced such behavior with her. She had always been honest and confident in me. She never treated me like an outsider when anyone else did, but her tune changed because she wanted to claim my inheritance. I got upset. I started to shout at her, which was when she screamed for her husband to get me out of the house, and I felt so betrayed. After so many years of being friends, she does this to me? I kept her secret and was in support of her when nobody else in the family was, but it appeared that she forgot about it. If the family found out that she was married to a black man, then they would disown her immediately. That's the thing I was saying about how I'm keeping her secret from the family. Well, guess what? I guess it's best to use past tense. The thing is, there's something I need to tell you guys. My family is racist. The older people are extreme racist to the point of being disrespectful to their employees who are not white. The younger generation is better, but they don't interact with people of color. When I was growing up, I was taught that they were, well, them and we were us. I did not understand it, but I was forced to accept it as the truth. This was ironic because they did not even treat me like a person sometimes, but since my grandparents loved me, they could not show it as much that they did not like me. When I was in my second year of college, I spent a lot of time at my cousin's house. She was the one of the few people I trusted in the city, and she was always at work, so I would just go to her house, clean, raid the fridge, <laughs> and watch some Netflix all the time. I did not know that she was dating Marcus, so one day I went there as normal, but then Marcus just shows up out of the blue. There was a lot of confusion, and I thought that he was breaking in. This was not because of the color of his skin, though, but because he was very big and intimidating and not very nice to me. He kept on saying that he was Diana's boyfriend. Luckily, a quick call to Diana solved it. When she came back from work, the three of us hung out and then Marcus went back home. This gave me the perfect opportunity to, uh, grill her and ask her what she thought she was doing. Guys, she absolutely begged me not to tell the family. She didn't want them to know that she was dating out of her race. We both knew that if they found out, well, they would not be pleased. So, I kept her secret. When a year later she decides to marry him without telling her family, I was her maid of honor. As far as he knows, I am her only family. She's never let him see her family and she doesn't plan to. For a long time, I've kept her secret husband away from the family. Our family never comes to this side of the country, so it was easy to hide, I'm telling you. You would think that maybe she could slip up on social media, but this girl was diligent. She's a private person who has no social media, and he's the same. His family absolutely loves and accepts her, which makes her, well, sad that Marcus will never get that love from her mother and father. So, you get how painful that can be for her, right? And now she's decided that she wants to put money before our bond. <laughs> she's forgetting that I can ruin her life with a snap of a finger. And I've done just so. I sent her wedding pictures to the whole family. By tomorrow morning, I know that they'll have them, and they will have seen it. And she'll have to deal with that mess. I just had to vent here. I know that I promised to keep her a secret, but if she does not have my back, she does not deserve for me to have her. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. Today's story is such a drama. Could you imagine holding that secret over somebody's head when it's not even a big deal? So what? You dated outside of your race. Who cares? Well, it looks like this family is full of racists, and they do care. So we're going to find out exactly what happened, because the next update is one month later. 
Sit back, relax, grab your favorite ice-cold beverage, because update number one is headed your way. And guys, if you want to help support the channel, it's super simple. Press the subscribe button underneath this video, and that's all you have to do. Here's your update. Well, I did not expect such backlash from you guys. Some of you are clearly missing the point that she is the one who started it. In addition, she's a grown woman and she can literally just take care of herself. And no, nothing happened to Marcus after the fallout. I sent the picture to the whole family with a caption. And my phone froze with all the messages where the family was asking me who the man was. Even though one could clearly see that they're kissing at the wedding picture. I was patient and I explained everything. I'll never forget the call I had with her mother. I could have sworn that the woman was going to faint and she kept on saying that her daughter would never. But I sent her more pictures as proof. She's always been very proud of her daughter, but how embarrassed she is now, she says. The focus was not on me at all. It was on her parents and how they could allow something like this to happen. When I heard the way they spoke about Marcus, I had to think for a while. I do not regret what I've done. I did what I had to do, but boy, oh boy, poor Marcus is the target of hatred more than she is. My family can be so offensive that it's embarrassing. I hate the way they spoke about Marcus as if he was not a person. Granted, he did nothing when his wife stole from me. He supported her and did not respond to my text messages when I begged him to make her change her mind, but my family was very angry. They were also very worried about the entire town. After finding out that their daughter was in an interracial marriage, the drama did not end there. Well, things only got worse. My mother called me while I was in class and told me that I had to go to my cousin's house. When I got there, the entire driveway was filled with cars that belonged to my family. You could hear the commotion from the outside and... When I came into the house, I saw Marcus in a corner, very surprised, and my cousin was spitting fire. When she saw me, she came to me and pushed me. I fell on the floor and fell and twisted my little ankle. I did get up to, well, due to the adrenaline, but later on, I found out that I sprained it. She was in a screaming match with her mother, who was telling her to leave Marcus immediately. She told her mother that she did not care how much she hates Marcus, but she was, well, with the love of her life. Her father was sitting in the corner and he just looked disappointed. He asked her if there was a reason and she shut down the idea of marrying somebody when they asked her. And he also, well, he hoped she was not, quote, knocked up with some mixed race baby because I will not accept such a grandchild word for word out of his mouth. She told everybody to get out, otherwise they're going to be called the police. See, the neighbors actually had to come and knock so as to find out what the hassle was because of the excessive amount of noise that we were making. Finally, we left one by one. My mother came with me to my apartment and we spent the whole night discussing it. And my mother is more tolerant than some family members, but because of how everybody is, she cannot speak up against them when they get like this. And she tried to teach me to be better, and it's only because of her that I do not have the same views as the rest of the family. My mother grilled me to no end. and She wanted to know every single thing, like why I never told her, and how long we thought we were going to keep this little secret. I answered all of her questions, and then I told her how my cousin had scammed me out of money. She was sad. She said that she too did not get a dollar. Even though the will specified that all the family members had to get something. Her brother does not consider us family. See, she was sad when she said that this family will never accept us for who we are. Even Diana had changed out of nowhere, even though she had been once kind to me. I don't care about being accepted into the family. All I know is that I just want me and my mom to get what is rightfully ours. We share the same blood as all of them, yet we're treated as less than them. I will not feel sorry for Diana. Her whole life, she's never had to deal with anything. 
Just deal with being called an outcast nothing. Now, she's going to see exactly how I felt. How she made me feel like I was not good enough to be part of this family and get what is rightfully mine. Update number two. Things only got worse. After I revealed her the truth, things only got worse for her. And for me, it's not like they improved. I did not get my money back, by the way. I only got a scolding because I did not tell the family earlier. This whole thing's left me with mixed feelings about whether I did the right thing. Even though what Diana did to me was really hurtful, she knows that I am a student and I'm just living within my means. My tuition, accommodation, allowance are paid for by my mom. But a little extra cash would really help. Especially since I'm thinking of immigrating once I graduate and the reason why I want to immigrate is that I want to experience different cultures. See, I've never been out of the country. Some family members have had trips across Europe, Asia, Africa, but my mother and I are not invited to those family trips. I want to not only have to rely on anybody for money when I do decide to migrate. I never knew Diana to be such a greedy person, and once I heard that it was $50,000 per grandchild, and she managed to pocket a hundred grand. It still did not make sense. Now she wants to turn on me and question whether I belong to the family, all because of money. I guess I was forced to see her true colors whether I wanted to or not. Her mother did manage to force her to leave her husband and go back to live with her family. She voluntarily did it, but I know that it was because of the scare tactics that our family uses. After she left, Marcus could not leave me alone. He came to my school at one point, even though I did not want to see him. Finally, I gave him a chance to explain to me why he and his wife decided to take what was rightfully mine. He told me that there was no excuse. They really did not think that I would find out. When I found out, she got upset and did not want to admit that what she did was wrong, and now she probably hates me because I got her separated from her husband. I thought about that for a while, so when I went back home, I decided to visit her mother's house. And that visit made me realize that I made the right decision by telling them the truth about her. She was not nice to me throughout the visit, and she barely even exchanged words with me. She appeared to be doing well for someone who had just been taken away from her husband, and when I was leaving, I had to use the bathroom. While I was there, I overheard a conversation that she was having with her mother. It turned out that the bathroom was right in front of their garden, and they were laughing at me and saying that this would still not make me part of the family. Her mother said she should never extended friendships to me, and that's what happened when you took in strays. For all these years, I thought she actually respected me, but now I feel like she just tolerates me. And then the worst part came. Her father was a criminal. She's no part of our family when she has his blood running through her veins. It was the first time that I heard anybody speak about my father. My mother refused to speak about him to the point where I had to stop begging. I soon came to realize that my father was a painful topic for my mom and did not need to bring him up. I left without confronting them feeling hurt. So then I went to my mother and told her what I overheard. She said that she had been in a relationship with someone that they did not approve of. My father was not a criminal. He was just a man who did not have much. He passed away a few months before I was born and my mother chose to not tell me about him. She had nowhere to go so she went to her family. Her family told her to give me away so that they could quickly get her married to somebody else. They did this because they wanted to save their reputation. Mom refused to give me away. But luckily, her mother fought for her to stay. And because of who my dad was, my relatives have never really liked me and considered me to be family. Never. This was why they had been silent when my cousin stole that money from me. Now that I think of it, many people knew that she took my share of the money and did not say anything to me. I'm angry right now. They cannot treat me like this. 
They tried to get rid of me before I was even born. What if my mother had agreed to go through with their plans? Then she would not have had me, which is something that I cannot imagine. Our relationship is not perfect, but my mother went through a lot to make sure that I could live. Well, when I go back home soon, I will have to tell Marcus that his dearest wife has chosen her family over him. Well, I don't care what happens with both of them. She should have been brave enough to tell our family about him from the very beginning, even if it meant they would disown her. But she could never live without the privileges that being a part of the family affords her. Another thing is that I want to address how I've been treated in this family. My uncle pretty much scolded me for keeping this from him regarding his daughter. If I'm not careful, they're going to turn this whole thing against me just to save her reputation. I know this family and I know how they operate. Update. Oh boy, do I have juicy news for you. Diana has officially been kicked out of the family after her mother found out that she did not actually file those divorce papers that they told her to file. Let me add a bit of fuel to the fire now. There's a possibility that Deanna's pregnant. She appeared to have gained some weight, and according to her mother, she is. But I can never be sure about what I hear in my family. I pretty much have to take everything with a grain of salt. Believe it or not, I was also in the middle of some very juicy drama this month as well, so... There was a family meeting to discuss how they would go about dealing with the backlash of my cousin's actions, and I was invited only because they wanted to grill me regarding every single small thing that happened in that relationship. After I was done being grilled, I thought it was only fair to ask them about the money that she took from me. By then, they'd already lost interest in me. One of my older cousins tells me, if you had actually told us the truth from the beginning instead of when it was convenient for you, then we could have prevented this mess. Where do you think the money's going to come from? A tree? Well, that was a bit harsh. I felt terrible. So even though I told them important information, they still treat me like I was nothing. And well, to be honest with you, that made me upset. So that's why I had an outburst and asked them why they never treated me like family. Diana's father told me to shut up. But I told him that I knew how they had forced my mother to put me up for adoption. He was very dismissive for the matter. And there, sitting right there while they continued to bicker, I realized that I was done trying to gain their approval. The whole lot of them, even Diana, was concerned about the wrong things. They thought that they could silence people, that they could get away with anything that they wanted. It sickened me. My mom had no choice but to seek refuge with them when she was left all alone by her dad, but it did not mean that I had to stick by them now. I'm a grown adult who can make her own choices and does not have to choose other people's approval. Even with Deanna, I was done keeping Marcus updated about whether she was alive or not, and even though I was the one updating him on her health, they did not even tell me that they were still together. Granted, they assumed that I would tell the family. Well, I did not have to worry about that because the whole situation imploded by itself, and I had just come back to school when my mother called me to let me know. Diana had officially been kicked out of the family for good. It appeared that her mother found out that she was in fact still dating Marcus. Well, they had a huge argument with her while they gave her an ultimatum between them and Marcus, and guess what? She packed her bags. Because of this, it's made her father's position within the community absolutely very weak. After my grandfather passed away, well, her father's pretty much the patriarch of the family, and he was not happy with me. He blamed me for everything that happened, which made me very clear when we had a meeting. And at the meeting, ugh, he tried to pin everything on me and not get his daughter kicked out of the family. But our family's prejudice worked against him, and as I said before, my family's very racist. They can say some very embarrassing stuff that I'm ashamed of. I know, 
I should not even be associating myself with them. I guess it's because of how my mother clings to them and I have to, by default, be associated. Anyways, it did not work in his favor. The family decided unanimously to kick out Diana. I'm still being blamed partially for what happened, but that appeared to be the end of it. So, all is well. That ends well. I guess.